I actually grew up in the Baltimore area. I was very lucky I was able to go see the Baltimore Symphony a lot. And I remember being a little kid and going to see the symphony. It was like right when I started playing cello. Orchestras are often playing Beethoven symphonies and they were playing one and I was just struck by how immense the sound was. It was my first experience hearing an orchestra live. And so that was, you know, hearing that big of a sound, you know, sitting not too far back was really powerful. I definitely felt excited because, you know, I, I've worked with Sound Icon in different capacities in the past and they're just, just a marvelous group. So I was really excited to work with them again in a new capacity, but I was a little intimidated by the instrumentation. It's not a strange instrumentation, but it's not one that I think I would have chosen had I been given, you know, any choice. And I would say the first couple of months I was very much like thinking, how do I want to relate to the septet, if at all? I wasn't able to consider the weight of being paired with Beethoven or else it would have been like crippling creative anxiety for me. So I chose to sort of really focus on my own compositional voice rather than trying to think about my relationship with this, you know, immense figure in music. When I was finishing up my doctorate at Boston University, we had these pretty intense doctoral exams. I had a violist on my committee and he said, I want you to be able to identify all of the Beethoven string quartets and be able to talk about them. You know, since graduation, I haven't really, you know, had to take many exams. So I think back to that time as like the transition from student to not student. And it was a really intense period, but I was able to find joy <laughs> while doing it. Um, and I passed and, you know, it was a, a very classic, like drop the needle, except not listening, but drop a score in front of me and say like, you know, which quartet is this from? I think about that as like, a really heavy weight that I was able to get through and, and I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm sure part of it is there's like a mystique around his persona, right? Like, you know, his life story is intriguing, but I also think the the music, especially the later music, is pushing some, especially harmonic boundaries and formal boundaries and sonic boundaries in terms of the size of, in his symphonies of the orchestra. But I also think orchestras are a bit of echo chambers in the sense that, you know, they'll play something that gains traction and then the audience wants to hear it so they keep playing it and it sort of becomes this cyclical thing and we we try to think about different ways of interpreting beethoven to to sort of please those same listeners i think that it's important to keep playing but i i also think it's important to to consider other voices that might not be heard because we're playing so much beethoven too